Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to go over the three bosses that we tested last week on the PTR for Heroic Sanctum of Domination, uh, which were Faith Scribe, Ro Kalo, Remnant of Nerzul, and Soul Render Dormazane. Um, these three bosses are all like mid-raid bosses. Faith Scribe is the third to last boss, so we are expecting it to be fairly difficult on Mythic specifically, uh, but today I'm only going to talk about Heroic and kind of how the fights work and what I think about them. So first up, Faith Scribe is the puzzle boss of the tier. If you think back to Nihilotha, for example, the soccer boss was the puzzle boss. Um, there was a very specific mechanic that you needed to solve. If you fail it, you wipe. That's essentially all it is. So on Faith Scribe, the puzzle is fairly simple. Um, it's not as gimmicky as the one on the soccer boss. Essentially, the whole boss room is a huge platform that has smaller circles with runes on them and occasionally these circles will rotate. There are a total of six circles uh, and at any given time I believe four of them will be active in the intermission phases and then once you get to the last phase you will have two active at a time that you need to solve. Um, and the way you do this is that each of the circles has a bunch of runes on them. One of the runes will light up and also at a specific given point on the circle, a kind of target will light up. And you need to stand on the circle, which will make it move. If you have an odd number of players standing on the circle, it will move clockwise. If you have an even number of players standing on the circle, it will move counterclockwise. Um, so essentially, you have to assign people within your raid to do this mechanic uh, while trying to also avoid standing on people's circles, which messes it up. Luckily, they made it so it, the circle only moves if you stand on the lit up rune instead of anywhere on the circle. So the goal is that you stand on this rune and the whole circle moves and you move with it until it gets to its target. Then it locks in place and you've solved your part of the puzzle. And then you're just waiting on everyone else to do their part as well. And the way this works is that you will have to do the intermission two times. Uh, so you'll have to solve this um, circle rune puzzle twice. And then in the last phase, the boss will periodically activate two of the circles and you need to solve them while also fighting the boss. So in the intermissions, you're also you're only fighting these like small ads that spawn. So it's not dangerous. There's not much going on. Um, however, in the last phase, while you're also dealing with boss mechanics, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So that's the gimmick. That's the puzzle. Stand on a rune until it locks into place. Um, generally, it worked OK a few bugs with it. Um, it was very hard to get the circle to switch directions. So if it was already moving one way and you're like, all right, we should actually go counterclockwise because that's a much faster route. Um, if a second person then stepped into the rune, it sometimes didn't stop, didn't change. So it was a little bit gimmicky. There are a few things that Blizzard needs to kind of hammer out with this mechanic, but generally it was a pretty cool puzzle boss. Um, the puzzle itself is not extremely difficult to do like that's one thing i didn't like about the nihilotha boss is that it was pretty gimmicky like even top level players um you are some of the race to world first stuff and there were guilds that struggled on that boss pretty hard um they had pretty high pull count on it and it was not because the boss is difficult it's simply because you missed the kick by you know a few pixels and that's it you wiped um so this boss is not as gimmicky as that. On Mythic, it's going to be a lot more interesting, but for Heroic, it's pretty straightforward. And once people understand kind of how the puzzle works, um, it's pretty easy to do. So then the boss phases themselves where you're fighting the boss um, didn't have that many mechanics. There was a scythe mechanic, similar to Argus, where you just need to find the safe spot. Uh, Three fourths of the room are covered in scythes. Um, and one fourth of the room is a safe zone. Um, so pretty straightforward. There were also debuffs that you had to run out of the raid that drops an orb, the orb then explodes. So not much else there. And then the tank mechanic was also a debuff that the tank has to run away from the boss. Uh, they explode and spawn an ad. Now you have to kill this ad before it reaches the tank um, because if they reach the tank, it explodes for raid damage. So overall, the mechanics, not that difficult uh, by themselves. So the, the puzzle, not that difficult. The boss itself, not that dis difficult. 
Once you put them together in the last phase, it becomes a little bit more interesting. And the mythic mechanics specifically will add a uh, quite a big twist as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this boss. And as far as puzzle bosses go, this might be one of the more interesting ones. Then the second boss that we tested was Remnant of Ner'zhul. So this boss is interesting in a way, but when we tested it, a lot of things were not working as intended. So basically, you're fighting the Remnant of Ner'zhul on this floating platform. Um, the biggest mechanic on this fight is a Dispel. So in our raid, we had um 25 players i believe two players got a debuff and whenever they got dispelled it dropped a puddle and it knocked everyone away from that player so when you have two of these and you're also forced to dodge other mechanics and you're trying to do the spells and you're getting knocked into puddles it was not a great time um but on ptr there were a few ways around this which on mythic might not work but generally, this fight is pretty straightforward. Essentially, you're fighting this boss. Um, he will, from time to time, spawn orbs that deal damage to random players. Your tanks need to debuff these orbs, and once you've killed them, someone can pick the orb up, run to the edge of the platform, and then yeet the orb off the platform, uh, so then you no longer have to deal with it. Um, that was one of the mechanics. The second one is a pretty much watch your feet and move out of bad dance type mechanic. And as the fight goes on, you will get more and more and more puddles that you need to dodge on the floor. So at the beginning, you have a few, you just move out of them. And then towards the end of the fight, it's going to be a series of puddles that you constantly have to be dodging. And their indicator is not that great. Um, I really hope that they learned their lesson from Sire Denatrius where they made absolutely awful puddles that you had to dodge in this second phase um but looks like they haven't learned their, their lessons um so as you get towards the end of the fight you will have to dis do deal with the spells and a bunch of puddles and that's pretty much all there is as far as mechanics go um so this fight kind of interesting it's a big gimmicky um i believe the main difficulty will come with just how do you deal with the dispels um, if there's a really good and efficient way of dealing with the spells then this fight becomes easy if you're forced to do the spells one by one um, and actually you know constantly get knocked around um, whenever you are doing the dispels then it will be a lot more difficult then the third boss that we tested was Soul Render Dormazane. Um, so this is the Garrosh fight um, that was data mined very early on. So Garrosh is essentially held prisoner and he's being tortured. Um, and you have to keep him from getting tortured too much because that makes him go crazy and then you wipe. So essentially the fight itself is takes place on a cone-shaped platform. Um, that has i believe five different lanes or four different lanes um and garage is at the peak of the cone and then towards the back of the platform you will have ad spawning that you have to kill before they make their way to garage while also interrupting them um then there's a very specific dance mechanic on this fight um all of the lanes will fill up with this blood type thing um it's a torment dance except for one of the lanes um so you have to essentially find the safe zone move to the safe zone and then you know once the aoe goes off you can move out of it and then inter in the intermission you have to do this sequentially so um you see the first safe zone then you have to do four or five dances uh, or movements before the intermission is over and you go back to, the, to just fighting the boss overall it was not that interesting um the most difficult part about this fight i believe will be just bad mechanic overlaps also on heroic when we tested it the ads that spawn in the back of the room that start walking towards garage could be you know slowed gripped uh stunned pretty much any cc you can think of which in my mind doesn't make much sense because 
there's no damage check there. Um, you can keep them away from Garage for an infinite amount of time if you want. Um, however, if those ads were immune to all CC and just walk towards Garage, then you would actually have to decide, all right, which ads do you kill versus which ads do you put the debuffs on? So during this raid, two people get marked with a debuff. Exa looks exactly like the one on Argus, uh, where you just dealt damage to nearby targets, so friends or foes. Um, so in practice, you're supposed to like take those debuffs, stand on top of the enemy ads, which ends up killing them or deals damage to them. But in practice, we were just able to CC all the ads or you know grip them and kill them. Uh, whereas if they were immune to CC, you would kind of have to make decisions of, all right, which ads do we... Uh, focus down, which ones do we stand debuffs on, so on and so forth. So overall, the testing itself was kind of boring just because a lot of the fight didn't work out the way I imagined it working out. Um, but if they make a few tweaks to it, this could be a pretty interesting fight. Um, then the last mechanic was just that three little chains spawn next to Garage, um, and you have to snap them. So you click on the chain, then you run away from it until it snaps. Um, and you have um, a specific amount of time to do those snaps before, because if you don't, then Garrosh again goes crazy and kills your raid. Um, so it was just like a raid damage mechanic. So all in all, a fairly interesting fight on paper, but in practice, the way it played out, it was a little bit more boring. Um, however, next round of testing, I hope that they make a few tweaks to it, uh, which could improve this fight tremendously. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about these bosses and which of these three are you most looking forward to. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.